Hallelujah. Oh, I feel his presence in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Hey, hey, hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Ah, think of the words of that song just for you. <laughs> oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just for you, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Not for me, not for somebody else, God, but just for you. Heavenly Father, we, we come before you right now, God. We want to say thank you. God, we say thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Your everlasting kindness, your peace, your comfort, your power, and most importantly, your son Jesus, which come to take away the sins of the world. Father, right now, God, as we come before you with your word, we pray that you give us wisdom and understanding of your word, God. We pray that you would shape our lives and you that your anointing, God, will, will permeate hearts and minds, that people will be saved, delivered, set free, empowered, encouraged inspired, and most importantly, God, let somebody get saved. God, we give you all the glory. It all belongs to you. We can't do nothing. Make the miracle of preaching happen again, Father, that people give them, that they would understand your word, and we be doers of your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. While you're yet standing, we're, we're going to have one, one scripture today. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, in the King. James Version, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Again, that's Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. Uh, going into the theme of that song, says, doing it for Jesus. The title of the scripture is do it all of the title of this sermon is do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And to paraphrase it, I'll just say do it for Jesus. Amen, somebody do it for Jesus. Saints and friends and everyone. I do a lot of reading. I, I, I like to read. Amen. I don't watch a lot of TV. I don't listen to a lot of radio, but I do a lot of reading. I read all the time and I'm constantly reading different articles and, and, and periodicals and just different things. And I was reading this one article uh, that was pre print, uh, printed in 2018 uh, by Jennifer Osmond. And it's, it was talking about Colossians chapter three from the perspective of the past, present, and the future. And I want to share just a, a little bit of that article with you, the past, present, and the future. And when we think about this one scripture, because how many know, amen, praise God, one word from the Lord is powerful. One word from God can change people's hearts and minds. One anointed word from the Lord, amen, can change nations, can change countries, can change families, communities, amen, households, amen, praise God, people, amen, churches, amen, uh, uh, jobs, amen. One powerful anointed word from the Lord is life-changing. Come on, somebody. So in the scriptures, oftentimes, when we, we tend to, it's so much in the word of God. There's so much there that, that helps us and guides us and encourages us and moves us in and, and times of need and in times, amen, on all occasions, there's something in the word of God that can fit every occasion. Come on, somebody. There is something in the word of God. Amen. But when I think about this particular topic, amen, of doing it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, it humbles me to understand that first and foremost, saints and friends, we must understand that we can't do nothing without God. Uh -huh. It's imperative. And we as Christians, we have that very 
essence of the foundation that in everything we have, in every way we move, and all of our being belongs to Jesus Christ. Come on, I know I got some help in this place this morning, but it, 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 that's what makes us different. That's what makes us separate from the world. That's what makes us, amen, praise God, uh, uh, look and view the world much differently than everybody else. Amen. The fact that we understand that we're moving by the grace of God. Now, when we look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, it's saying so much more than he's just lived for Jesus Christ. It's, it's saying more than that. We know all the cliche things of WWJD, what would Jesus do, and the bumper stickers and the coffee mugs and all of the things that the world is so cliche to talk about. I'm doing it for God. I'm doing it for Jesus. And we're quick to say, to God be the glory. Amen. Praise God. But I want to ask and look at this scripture as we say, though it says that, that it says so much more, that we just got to do more than just live for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Though it, we got to do it so though as, as if it's said, and as we ponder the message in and of itself, it would pack a more mighty punch. See, in the context of Paul's letter to the young church of Colossae, this verse is called to live from a foundation of gospel centrality with the past, the present, and the future in mind. And she goes on to say in this particular uh, article that this verse calls us to live in the light of the gospel. See, saints and friends, to encourage you and empower you, we must live in the light of the gospel. Uh huh. That's what drives us. That's what moves us. And we appreciate our past. Come on, somebody. I don't want to uh, live in my past, but I must appreciate my past because my past helped me to get to my future. Come on, somebody. If it had not been for the Lord, Mother Butler, on our side, where would we be? And if I had nothing to gauge it on, amen, praise God, which is my past. See, sometimes we want to forget forget our past. Sometimes we want to forget our past. And it says, so whatsoever you do in word or deed, so whatever you do, regardless, meaning what even what you've done, come on, somebody, even what you have done, we must understand that we got to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so my past is something that helps me to appreciate and remind me that I got to give thanks to God, the Father, through him. Because when you think about your past and what God has done for you and how he's brought you out of so many things, think about the sicknesses and think about the diseases and think about the pandemic and think about the people, millions of people dying around around us, millions of people dying of instant lead poison all around us being shot and killed. But God saw fit and he saw fit to keep you at this appointed time that you got over sickness, you got over disease, you got over coming in the hospital time and time and time and time again. God has brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light and we got to give God thanks. Oh, hallelujah. Because there's so many people who didn't make it out. There's so many people who didn't get another opportunity. There's so many people where the car didn't swerve and the car actually hit them and killed them. There are so many people that were walking across the street and didn't make it across the street because something tragic happened to them. But when I think about my past, I wish I had some help in this place today. When I think about how God took me through two wars and planes overseas and all kinds of dangerous scud missiles dropping all around me but God saw fit to save this boy to help me and, and to encourage me and to keep me safe from all hurt harm and danger because his word says I will never leave you no matter if you go to Saudi Arabia he said I'm near if you go to Uzbekistan he said I'm near if you go to Africa, if you go to wherever you go, it doesn't matter. God said, I'm near. So my past helps me to appreciate the will of God. Yes, my past helps me to appreciate. And that second verse tells us to give thanks to God, the Father, through Jesus, because we are reminded that God is indeed our Father. Oh, hallelujah. 
That's one of the issues we're having in the world today. We're having the issues because so many fatherless people, people feel fatherless, they feel abandoned. They feel, amen, praise God, that they have no father. They, and, and that's a very important, critical piece in the development of a child and the development of an adult is that father figure. And it's one of the reasons, amen, praise God, I think why we don't see men in the church like we do with women. I think it's, it's one of the reasons why men are having a hard time identifying with God. Because how can you identify with our father if you can't identify with your natural father? I wish I had some help. With your natural father, there's a disconnect with the identification with the natural father. So quite naturally, there's an identification crisis going on between the young boy and the man. Yes, but we got to do it all in the name of our Lord Jesus. So the past lets us understand and reminds us that God is indeed our father. And as we understand that he's indeed our father, he is the one who gives to all mankind life and breath and everything else. Acts chapter 17, 25. He is the father from whom every family in heaven on earth is named. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 15. We are not self-created. Mm. <laughs> we are not self-created. Yeah, we got to understand there's so many. The world would have us to believe that through science, through, 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 you know, we came from the monkeys, we evolved, but I ain't no monkey. Come on, somebody. I didn't come from no monkey. Uh-huh. I came from Jesus. Can I get some help in here? Yeah, 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 yeah. It came from Adam and Eve. Amen. Praise God. And that was not self-created. And I know we're trying to, science, we're trying to morph people and we're trying to, to use cells to recreate people and all of this kind of stuff. But that is not of God. Come on, somebody. But God says we are not self-created, nor do we self-exist. We don't exist in of ourselves, but we exist and we move because God allows us to. Come on, somebody. We have a father who has granted us life and he gives us everything we need. Yeah, when we do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he gives us everything that we need. Somebody say it's like Prego, like that commercial say, he says it's in there. That old Prego commercial, y'all know what I'm talking about. That Prego commercial said, he said, it's in there. He said, it's the oregano, he said, it's in there. He said, whatever else, it's in there. Well, I want to tell you something about Jesus. Whatever you need, it's in there. If you need healing, it's in there. If you need deliverance, it's in there. If you need, amen, your marriage fixed, it's in there. If you need your children fixed, it's in there. If you need a job, guess what? It's in there. If you need, amen, praise God, whatever you need, it's in there. Uh -huh. God gives us everything we need. Amen. He creates us and he sustains us. So think about this. When we do it in the name of the Lord, when we do it in his name and we do it in his name, as the Colossians is telling us, he don't know, not only does he create us, not only does he let us to exist, but he also sustains us. Through the verse, Paul reminds us that we got to thank our God. We got to thank God. The Bible says, and whatsoever you do in the word of deed, it says, do it all in the name of the Lord. He said, and give thanks to God. We got to give thanks to God. We got to constantly be thanking God. We got to constantly, amen. He said he didn't have us in the praises of his people. We have to constantly be praising him and giving him thanks. Amen. Praise God. Because he's worthy. Because he's worthy. He doesn't have to do anything else. He's already worthy. He's already done enough for you. He's worthy. He's worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the honor. But not only is God our father, he is also our redeemer. Come on, somebody. He is not just our father, but he is our redeemer. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He's our redeemer and him and praise God. When Paul says to give thanks to him, he means Jesus. See, he ain't talking about nobody else. Paul is talking about Jesus. He said, give thanks to Jesus. See, we want to thank a lot of things. Amen. The world does, but the world doesn't want to thank Jesus. We got to thank Jesus. We got to give God, the author and the creator, his due, his just due. He said he's a jealous God and he will have no other God before him. So when we got to be specific, when we're giving thanks, we're giving and thanks to Jesus. Ah, hallelujah. 
We're giving thanks to God. Paul is telling us through him, he means Jesus. We ought to thank the Father through the Son. It is our faith and hope in Jesus, the beloved Son sent on our behalf that grants us access to the Father. In the letter to the Ephesians, Paul said, for through him, we both Jews and Gentiles have access in one spirit to the Father. We can approach our Father through the Son and thank him for life and salvation. God has opened up the veil for us and, and closed the gap between the Jews and Gentiles. He closed the gap that we once was there. There was a gap where we couldn't get access to the Father. Hello, somebody. And if you ever been in a situation where you couldn't get access to somebody, maybe access to a family member, you couldn't reach them on the phone, you couldn't find them for a long time. You ever been in a situation where you can't get access to your boss or you can't get access to somebody that you need access to? That's not a good feeling. But I want to sit and tell you today, I thank God for access. Yeah, I praise God for access. If you can't think nothing up, maybe your bank account is not that large. Maybe you don't have a big house. Maybe, amen, praise God, you're going through and you're struggling through through your body. But if you can't thank God for nothing else, thank God for access. Because I'm here to encourage and empower you that because you are a child of God, saints and friends, you have access. You got Jesus' cell phone number. Everybody ain't got Jesus' cell, personal cell phone number. You got Jesus' personal cell phone number. You got his digits. Come on, somebody. If I don't get excited about nothing else, I got Jesus' number, mother. I can call him any time of day. I can call him on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, Saturday and Sunday. He never sleeps or slumbers. I can call him any time. And guess what? I can call him. And guess what? He going to answer. Everybody don't answer. You can call somebody. That don't mean they got the answer. But when you got access, come on, somebody. When you do it in the name of the Lord and you have access, not only can you call mother, not only can you call brother, but you will call and he'll answer. Oh, that's enough to give God some glory right there. Because God, he pick up the phone. He, he would pick it up. He said, hello? He said, hello? He said, what, you, what can I do for you today? He said, hello, because I am our father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He said, give us this day our daily bread. He picked up the phone. He said, hello, how can I help you, my child? What do you need today? Amen. And that's the one thing about the posture of remembering who made us and remembering who saved us. And remember who laid the foundation. He laid a foundation for us to have gratitude as we walk in an aware. We got to be aware that we have access. We got to be aware that he's our redeemer. We have to be aware that he's got all power. And we got to be aware that whatever we do, whatever deed, whatever word that we do, we got to do it in the name of Jesus. We're not responsible for our own life. And breath, nor are we right standing before a holy God. Understand, you got to always understand that we're never right standing before a holy God. Uh huh. We, we, we're never, amen, praise God, going to always be totally right before a holy God. That's why he said, cast our cares upon him. That's why he said, amen, that we got to confess our sins and our faults to one another. That's why he said, amen, come boldly to the throne of Christ. And we we, we, we got to get help, amen. We're able to repent and we're able to he would, uh, let our flesh die daily because we're always in this sinful nature before a holy God. We walk in humility and we got to walk in thanksgiving. We can never take it for granted, amen, praise God, that we have arrived. We can never take it for granted that we've made it all the way, that everything is perfect in our lives, amen, praise God. We're imperfect, but we're serving a perfect God. We got to make it routine and acknowledge that we exist and that we know by grace alone that leads us to gratitude. And then the act in the presence is whatever you do in word or deed, whatever you do, in word or deed. We don't do it for our own gratification. We don't do stuff for our own glorification. We don't do stuff for our own acknowledgement and pat on the back, but we do it for Jesus. Come on, somebody. I preach for Jesus. I don't preach for man. He said, preach in season, out of season. 
You got to preach the word. I don't usher for, for man. I usher for Jesus. You don't deacon for man. You don't deacon that's for man. You deacon for Jesus. You don't sing, amen, for man and woman, but you sing for Jesus. Come on, some for the glory of God. Come on, somebody. What we do, whatever your hands find to do, do it for the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah. The foundation of remembering giving thanks afforded us to the Son from the Father gives us the motivation and basis for how we are to speak and act today. We are creatures brought forth by a good creator who wrote us into his story and wrote our stories as well. We thrive when all of us say that and do flows from the ultimate reality and we suffer when we depart from that reality. As long as we stay close to God, he stay close to us. When we get away from God, that's when we find ourselves falling short. Paul reminded the Corinthians, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. Come on, somebody. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. As the blood brought and adopted children of the Father in heaven, we are called to be ambassadors, a reflection of him who's watching the world. Jesus not only purchased our salvation, but the right to inhabit whatever we do. He purchased us. We've been bought with the blood stain of Jesus Christ. We are not of our own, but everything you do in deed, everything you do in word, do it for Jesus. Aim for the future and do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. See, it's not about just the past. It's not about just your present, but it's also about the future. It's not just what I didn't do and then I can't save and now I'm doing it and then I'm doing it today, but it's what I'm gonna do tomorrow. I have it made up in my mind that whatever deed or whatever word that I'm doing it for Jesus. See, when you got it made up in your mind that I'm not going back, when you got it made up in your mind that for God I live and for God I'm going to die. When you got it made up in your mind that no matter what happens, uh, no matter the earthquakes, uh, no matter the divers, uh, no matter what's happening in my house, uh, no matter what's going on in the world, uh, but I'm going to stay focused uh, on Jesus uh, and whatever my deeds uh, and whatever my words uh, that I'm going to do it for Jesus. Oh, when you got a made up mind, Paul said in another letter to the church, Whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. First Corinthians chapter 10, 31, who's getting the glory in our lives? That's the question that I'm asking you today, saints and friends, as I close. Who's getting the glory in your lives? Oh, hallelujah. Does the mall get the glory? Oh, glory to God. Does your job get the glory? Oh, bless his name. Does your family or some man or woman get the glory? Oh, hallelujah. But who gets the glory in your life? I'm here to submit to you today and empower you to give God the glory. Give God the glory in your life. And whatever you say, give him the glory. And whatever you do, give him the glory. And wherever you go, give him the glory. And whatever you receive, give him the glory. And whatever you don't receive, give him the glory. And whatever happens, give him the glory. Whatever doesn't happen, give him the glory. In all things, give him the glory. Despite what it looks like, give him the glory. Despite what the enemy tries to present, give him the glory. Despite maybe how your body feels sometimes, give him the glory. The Despite, amen, praise God, uh, what they say about you, uh, give them the glory. Uh, despite, amen, praise God, the lies that are told, uh, give them the glory. Uh, despite it may not be sign sunshine and outside, uh, but I can give them the glory because uh, I'm still alive. Uh, I'm still here. Uh, there's a lot of people who are not here, uh, but I'm still here. Uh, it might be raining, y'all. Uh, dark. The sky is dark. The rage is, is growing, but I still give God, I give God the glory. It might be a snowing outside, 
packed up to six, seven feet of snow, uh, freezing cold, uh, but I can shovel uh, and give God the glory. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Uh, oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, there are people uh, that are in Zimbabwe. Uh, there are people uh, who got earthquakes. Uh, houses are floating down the street, uh, but they're still in the streets, uh, giving God the glory. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Uh, oh, I let nothing uh, is going to steal my joy, uh, but I'm going to give God and everything I say and everything I do and all of my deeds I'm going to do it for Jesus oh give her our mercy I'm going to do it for God I submit to you today church that as long as we do it for Jesus God will God will and he can he'll show up and he'll show out he'll heal he'll deliver he'll set free he'll make the resources uh, available. Uh, oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, uh, he'll bring you out uh, of crack cocaine. Uh, he'll bring you out uh, of prostitution. Uh, he'll bring you out uh, of backbiting. Uh, he'll bring you out uh, of that backslidden state. Uh, he'll bring you out uh, of the crack house. Uh, he'll bring you out uh, of being mean and angry. Uh, he'll bring you out uh, of whatever you're going through. Uh, he'll bring you out uh, of depression. Uh, he'll bring you out uh, of anxiety. Uh, he can heal diabetes. Uh, he's a cancer deliverer. Uh, oh, can I get a witness? Uh, he can take away uh, sugar diabetes. Uh, oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, he can get inside uh, of a stroke uh, and make a stroke uh, act right because uh, his name uh, is above every name. Uh, he got all power uh, and his name is Jesus, uh, the Alpha, uh, the Omega, uh, the beginning and the end, and he got all power. He got all power. He got all power. He got all power. Power in his name. There's power in the name of Jesus. When I have no other name, when Tylenol won't do it, when morphine won't do it, when the pain is rushing uh, in my body, uh, and sometimes uh, the things that the doctor gives, uh, it don't work, uh, but there is a name uh, that's not manufactured by man. Uh, there is a name uh, that can heal your body. Uh, there is a name uh, that can deliver you from homelessness. Uh, there is a name uh, that can fix your finances. Uh, there is a name uh, that can deliver your husband, uh, that can deliver your wife, uh, that can change your children. There is a name. Ring, ring, ring. I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. God said, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. He said, let me in. Let me in. I hear God knocking at your door right now. I'm here to tell you, let him in. Open up the door and let him in. Lord have mercy. Woo, Lord. Hallelujah. Open up the door. Run down the stairs and open up the door to your heart and let them in. Come on in, God. Have your way. Deliver me, God. Save me, Lord. I need you to be my father. Oh, my physical father. He may not have been around. But God, I need you to be my father. Because he said, our father, which art in heaven. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. He said he'll never leave you. He said he'll never forsake you. Finally, in my closing, everything in this verse denotes to a sum. What will be the sum of our total lives? What will be our appreciation of the past and our acts in the present act of the end? The call to do everything. This is a call, y'all. To do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus lifts our eyes to the future and requires us to ask ourselves, what or who am I living for? Can I get a witness in here? I'm living for Jesus. I'm living for Jesus. I need you to make a declaration today that I'm living for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I done did a lot of things in my life, but there was nothing more important than living for Jesus. 
There was no greater decision than I ever made in my life than the decision to live for Jesus. I'm asking you today, if you need that decision, if you backslidden, some of you who are listening on Zoom and on Facebook, you are in a backslidden state. You were born and raised in the church and you lost your zeal. You lost your power. You got disconnected. But God said, I'm married to the backslider. Uh-huh. He said, you can't divorce me. He said, because I'm married to you. And he ain't going to throw you away. He said, if I, you just could come on and repent. Turn away from your wicked ways. Turn away and get reconnected. Get charged back up. Sometimes, you know, we go walk through the house. You know how you got something on and you walk through the house and you hit the cord and you got the vacuum cleaner running, hit the cord. You say, why how, how did the vacuum cleaner get turned off? Because it got disconnected. And when you plug it back up, it gets roaring back. It's ready to go again. All you got to do is plug back up to Jesus. Just plug back up to the power source. Because you wasn't created by yourself. You didn't self-create and you don't self-exist. You exist and you're created by Jesus Christ. And you got to get back reconnected to your power source. Whatever you do, do it all in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Father, right now, we thank you for everybody under the sound of my voice. I pray in the name of Jesus, if there's somebody out there who needs to receive you as their personal Lord and Savior that they will lift their hands and surrender to you because you're standing at the door knocking. Let them open up their heart, God. God, I'm a sinner. I believe it. I'm a backslider, God. I used to be in the church. I used to have a love and a passion for you, your word, your people. Somewhere down the road, I got disconnected. God, reconnect me. Created me a clean heart and renew. It was just renew a right spirit, God. Make it renewed. I accept it, God. I believe it. I confess that you are Lord. Come into my heart and save me. If you said that prayer today, then you are saved. You're reconnected to the power source. And once you get reconnected to that power source, we're asking that you reach out to us in some form or fashion. Reach out to this ministry so that we can help disciple you. We can help grow you in the faith. We can help you so that you don't slip away again. Because the enemy, he's seeking, he's walking around seeking, trying to sift you like wheat. And you're going to need to get around and get connected with the power source and the people of power. And you're going to need prayer. You're going to need teaching. You're going to need love. You're going to need strength. With two or three, with touch and degree, he's in the midst. And wherever he is, the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. We declare liberty today. We declare freedom today. Freedom from all manner of sin in the name of Jesus. We cast out every imagination, demonic imagination. We come against those spirits of depression. We come against that suicide spirit. We come against, amen, praise God, insecurity in the body of Christ and in the people of God. And we, in the world, we come against insecurity and we speak empowerment and love and security that you have faith in God with the faith of a mustard seed. You can move mountains. And right now we pray for you. We give you glory. We give God glory. We give him honor. We give them praise and we pray that this word will emanate into the hearts and minds of the people. And we thank you right now. We thank you. God, we thank you right now for your word. God, we pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, God, that whatever we do in deed and in word and in our lives, that it will be done to glorify you, that we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise, God. We thank you for having a mind of thanksgiving for what you brought us through, through our past, how you're blessing us in our present, God, and how you've encouraged us and inspired us for our future. We look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, God, and we thank you because the steps of a good man or woman, they're ordered by you. Continue to order our steps and guide us, God, and we'll be careful never to steal your glory. We give you all the honor and praise, which all belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you as always our prayer. At this time, we're going to ask our deacon to come forward. This is our first Sunday of the month. And this is the first time since we finished our bishop's offering. And, you know, prior to then, we were doing our facility modernization fundraiser. We have gotten the quotes from the uh, folks to work um, on redoing the pews and the carpet and everything. We do have a number that we'll share with you later. But 
we are working towards that next year. That's one something that we want to do. We have picked out the committee. We put a little committee together, if you would, to pick out the color. We'll be sharing with that on Wednesday at Bible study, after Bible study. We'll be getting your input on that as well. But we want to move forward with our facility modernization. We have a goal that we're going to be looking to reach. Uh, and I'm, 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 I've given my tithes already. So this is the first, every first Sunday going forward, unless the Lord changes something, we plan to raise for our facility modernization money, which is for the upbuilding and keeping of our church. And uh, we're asking you to do your very best. I'm not going to ask you to commit to whatever you, whatever's in your heart, but do your, be consistent every first, on top of your tithe and offering, your, your tithe, let your offering be to the facility modernization fund on the first Sunday, the facility modernization fund. There's some things that we want to do uh, just to beautify our facility. This is God's house. We want God's house uh, to be, to, we want to be him being be impressed. Uh, even more so by his home. Amen. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. I know what God placed in my heart. I got $500. I got $500 that I'm putting in. This is in addition to my tithes, that $500 that I'm, me and my wife are putting into facility modernization. Uh, and I'm believing God that he's going to bless me to be able to do this as often as I possibly can. Uh, but every month I'm coming with something, but I'm coming to this starting off, kicking it off because we're back into it uh, with $500 for our facility modernization. Uh, plan and, and nobody should the, as the pastor I should be the first amen I should be the first leading the way amen and so we're doing that amen praise God and we're asking you to do whatever you can do I'm not telling you what amount to give I'm not telling you what to pledge I'm not doing any of that you know what you have and what you're able and capable of doing and so I believe that you do your best because some of you may have five thousand dollars some of y'all got fifty thousand I don't know but whatever you got it may be five dollars whatever you got we're asking whatever you do do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right, we're here to raise our our offering for today, and um, God has been good to us. I say God has been good to us. Thank you, Lord. I, I know that because I woke up this morning, if nothing else. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm here by the grace of God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I can't pay God back. I, it's impossible. Every, every day is, it's worth more than this whole world. Thank you, Lord. But God doesn't ask us to give what we don't have. Right? But he did say give cheerfully that which we do have. God loves a cheerful giver. So if you're not cheerful yet, get cheerful. Be glad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There, there are uh, several ways that you can give. Uh, you can give through the envelopes. Just let the ushers know what you need. Um, secondly, you can give through uh, our church app www.prayerhousecogbf.org prayerhousecogbf.org uh, You can also give using Cash App. Our Cash App handle is dollar sign prayerhouse270 and you can give by 
U.S. mail, mail your offering into Prayer House, Church of God by Faith, P.O. Box 30108, Rochester, New York, 14603. 14603, P.O. Box 30108, Rochester, New York, 14603. Praise the Lord. And we're going to ask you to pray along with me or agree with me in, in prayer concerning this offering. God, we thank you. Thank you, God, so much for what you've done for us. Already, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. Our, our hearts are open to you because we owe you everything. As the message said, we are not our own. Hallelujah, God, for we've been bought with a price, the price of your shed blood. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, that you've redeemed us. Hallelujah, God. You bought us. Hallelujah, God. For eternity, we're yours. We're your sons and daughters. And you are our very own Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Lord, we ask you to look on everybody. Look on the heart, Lord. That's, the way, that's what you look at. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we give our offering today, hallelujah, God, we ask your blessing upon it. Multiply it back to your people. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I like that. God loves a cheerful giver. How many of you genuinely, genuinely love the Lord? I mean, you genuinely love the Lord and you have joy. Amen. Thank God for joy. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for seeing so many. I see Brother Devin, uh, Sadri. I see different ones I see. Thank God for seeing y'all. Amen. Praise God. Uh, first of all, uh, before we let me um, get ready to log off our online visitors, and then we go into our announcement. But and I want to uh, encourage our online visitors, especially those on Facebook, uh, please consider giving to this ministry. I uh, haven't said it in a while, but we have a facility modernization fund. If you want to give to us, you can see the link on Facebook to our website. There's a giving tab on there. Please consider giving. Please consider downloading our church app at the Google uh, Store, Play Store, Amazon or the Apple store and consider uh, having that on free. Uh, and it gives you all of, a lot of information concerning our church and our ministry. We thank God for you joining with us. And it's always a privilege to have you with us. And we look forward to seeing you again on next Sunday. Father, we pray for those who are visiting us online, our virtual members and, and followers. And God, we thank you for them. We pray in the name of Jesus that they would share, like, uh, send this message to someone else, Father, and, or follow us on any one of our platforms. Uh, we pray for that. You reach out to us, God, that we may pray for them, that we may help uh, to, to, to minister to them in any way, shape, or form. We thank you for them right now. We pray for their household, that you continue to bless them until the next appointed time. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we always say we are the church. We believe that God is still working miracles. Amen.